Next, we'll look at the isometric settings. The first setting is the drawing size, which you will select a paper size from a drop-down list. Drawing sizes range from A to E with the dimensions shown in English units and from A0 to A4 in metric. Selecting a drawing size will update the drawing frame file name for the appropriate drawing size. You'll need to select the direction of the north arrow on the plot relative to the global axis and set a scale factor for support symbols as well. As you switch the drawing size, this factor will automatically be updated as well. The drawing frame file input shows the path and file name of the drawing frame file. It's read only except when a drawing size is user defined. The ISO viewer section is used to point to the path and file name of the ISO viewer exec executable. The Browse button can be used to find the ISO viewer executable, and the selection will be saved to the Stress ISO INI file. On the Overflow tab of these settings, you have the option to decide what your file extension looks like. You can overwrite the existing files. If there's a file already existing with the same name, it will just be overwritten. Uh, you can select Normal File Extensions, if a file name already exists, it would be renamed and appended with alpha characters, so file name A, file name B, etc. Or you can choose the append the plot file extension to IO1, IO2 extension. Here, an alphanumeric string is appended with the file name. And there's a checkbox to add the drawn one of one text to single ISO sheets. So if there's only one drawing, we would still print that it's the first drawing of one. On the dimensioning text tab, there are many options here. Various combinations of English and metric bore and dimensional units are available under the style. And you can pick and choose what dimensions are shown for on your plot. You can draw dimensions at all points, at each component and point level. The dimension line in this case would stop at each node. You can choose bends, which would draw dimensions at bends. You can choose end-to-end, -end, which would draw dimensions end-to-end -end and not stop at each node or component. Or you can select supports, which would draw dimensions to supports. More than one of these can be selected at a time, as is shown here. So these are examples of all points on the left and the support option on the right. And an example of the end-to-end -end dimensioning on the left and having that bend dimension checked on on the right. On the bottom of this tab, there's an option to place support dimensions inverted. So selecting this option would place your support dimension in the opposite direction to the component of the overall dimensions. And there's an option to merge the consecutive run dimensions as one. Selecting this option joins the straight runs and pipes so the dimension doesn't break at each node. So on the left, an example of the support dimension being on the same side as the overall dimension, whereas on the right, uh, it's inverted. And this is an example of the merge dimension. It skipped the nodes on that vertical line. Also, I want to show you some additional dimensioning capabilities. You can now view dimensions for your base elbow supports as well. And your dummy pipe supports also. And also if you have a trunnion in your model on a straight run. And the last area of the dimensioning text tab allows you to adjust the values in the distance fields to modify the distance of the dimensions from their reference item. Next is the automatic split tab for user input on where the drawing should be split. 
If none is selected, an isometric would be split into multiple sheets only if there are disconnected pipelines, either in the model or in the selection. The user can choose to split the isometric based on a number of components by putting in a minimum number of components that will be allowed on a single sheet and a maximum number of components that would be allowed on a single sheet. Or the user can split the isometrics by segment line number. So if the line number is provided on the segment tab of the input grid, you can choose this option. And lastly, there's the coordinates tab of this settings where there are some options on where to place coordinates on the drawing. For full label coordinates, you can place them at the start point. Every isometric is going to have a start point and this can be labeled. The use of this option is to be able to have exactly one coordinate label on the isometric when all other options are unchecked. You can place it at an open end. An open end is basically an unconnected node, which the program interprets as open. You can place the coordinates at sheet, which would place a coordinate label anywhere a line transition occurs. Or you can select to output the coordinate labels as elevations, which would be applied to all of the previous three options, but labeling them as elevation labels rather than full coordinate labels. Down below, there's one other option to suppress the elevation labels. This suppresses the automatic elevation labels, but any options in the full label coordinate section are not affected by checking this option on. So here we have an example with the easting, northing, and elevation being labeled. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.